Hey guys, it's Joe for PocketNow.com, and one of the things I really like showing you about Android is how you can customize it. And one of the main ways to do that is with alternate launchers or home screens. Well, today I've got a home screen that reminds me of something I saw way back in my Newton days called a live stream. It's called Slide Screen. Let's go take a look. Okay, to start with, what is a live stream? Well, a live stream is a concept wherein the information that is most relevant to you is displayed first and foremost in your graphical user environment. Now, the way that I saw this was uh, very, very sketchy. It was just a concept, uh, really didn't even function. It was more just a, a demo than anything, but what it was trying to convey and the way that it worked was really revolutionary and I haven't seen it ever since. So what am I talking about? Well, imagine if you will, you have a cascading card deck. And on those cards, one of them is, the, is in the front, you've got a whole bunch behind them, and some others that aren't quite in the front yet. Uh, and if you put that on a timeline, the one that's in the front is what you're working on right now, or what is most relevant to you right now. As you go back through the deck, you get stuff that you've worked on in the past, and as you scroll forward through the deck, you get stuff that you haven't started working on yet or that's scheduled to be worked on. So, okay, that's all very abstract. Let's do real world stuff. So let's say I'm at work and I'm writing a Word document. Well, in that front card is, or that front window, to borrow a term from Microsoft and Apple, is my Word doc. And I can fill that up to the full screen just like you can today. But when I restore it back down or minimize it back down, it goes into the front card. And if I want to see the Excel sheet that I was working on just a few minutes ago, I can scroll back to the previous card. Oh, and before that there was an email, and before that there was a PowerPoint presentation, and before that there was a website. And I can scroll back and forth and back and forth. As I get new emails, they come up into the deck. Now, why is that important? Why is that revolutionary? Well, right now, uh, We've actually gone through a few iterations of how we get to data, how we work with stuff, not just on uh, phones, but on computers. So for example, if I want to work on a Word document, back in the early Windows days, I had to find Word, open it, find my document, and then open it. Well, that's made progress with file associations and whatnot, where now, instead of first opening Word and then opening the document, now I can actually look for the document, open it, and it knows that it's a Word document, so it uses Word. Or maybe it's a PDF, or maybe it's an Excel spreadsheet. It will open the app that it needs to, to be able to interact with that information. So instead of being program-centric, now it's information-centric. And that's really the concept behind these live streams. Now instead of being content centric now it's timeline centric and the stuff that is most relevant to you is closest to the middle of that deck and the stuff that's not is further away from the deck all right you with me so far now like I said I have not seen that concept applied in practice since way back when I had my Newton message pad and actually it was in the early days of that it was a 130 not even my uh, my 21 or 2200 but back to this this app is the closest thing that I have seen to actually realizing that concept where you have kind of a deck of information now what do I mean by that well, if we look in here Right in the middle, we have our day, date, and time. We have our wireless status. In this case, you can see I'm connected to uh, Wi-Fi. I have a relatively poor signal strength. And I even have my time of day. Over on the other side of that, I've got my current weather conditions. And yes, it looks like I'm shooting this in the middle of the night because the sun hasn't come up yet. But it also shows me my temperature and the, uh, the weather conditions. So all of my pertinent information right there, right in the middle. And then as I fan out from that, I have personal information at the top. And I have more peripherally important information at the bottom. So not really a true cascade like I was telling you about before with the live stream, but still very interesting and very unique and very useful. So let's go up to the top here. First of all, well, before we do that, 
You'll notice we don't have any widgets, or rather, we don't have the ability to plug in any third-party widgets. Rather, all we have is what comes with the app, which is kind of limiting, but it's still kind of nice because it's relatively thoroughly thought out and has a lot of the stuff that you'd want to add onto the screen with widgets. You know, weather forecasts, big clocks, Facebook, stocks, Twitter, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. Okay, So let's go back up to the top. Up at the top we have phone calls. Missed phone calls, voice messages, and whatnot right there. And it'll show up with a little indicator like on my calendar. We've got email. Next one down. And I just read all my email before shooting this video. Calendar items. It says I've got three upcoming events and it shows me them. And over on the other side you'll notice that they're all color coded. So I can see at a glance what kind of information that is. If I want to go into this information, simply tap on it and then I'm presented with the default Android view. So that's all very nice and very, uh, very familiar. So moving down to the bottom we have information. And this is information not necessarily about me or, or direct interactions with me, but about stuff that I'm interested in. In this case, I've got some articles, I've got some Facebook, I've got some stock quotes. Uh, let's see stock quotes, and again, they're color-coded. Uh, CF Industries right now is down 301. Take a look at that, and it says, hey, this is a whole bunch of CF symbols, so which one do you mean? Well, I mean CF Industries Holdings, Inc. And if you take a look, this is where I bought into it. I sold when it got about there, and it's since then tanked and been climbing a little bit. Some wild activity, but this is just you know your your normal Google Finance app. It, it it does really nice. It does what it's supposed to do, so not bad there. But that information is right there. It pulls it out of my portfolio and it presents it to me on the screen, complete with you know not just the price and uh, you know whether it's up or down. It also has an iconical representation that it's a stock quote. It has that color coding on the other side. And then, of course, it's got more information. In this case, it's got a volume indicator to show you what the trading volume has been. And I really, really, really like that. It's subtle, it's simple, but it shows you more information. But this isn't about stocks. Let's go on and take a look. Over here, we have a Facebook post. We'll tap on that. This is still an interface that's inside the app rather than taking you to the Facebook interface, which is nice. It keeps you there, keeps that information local, so then if you want to act on that, you can go further. But if you're just looking informationally, you can look at it right there. So very nicely done. But I can't see everything. For example, maybe some of that stuff isn't important. So I can grab that middle bar and move it up, and now I just have my calendar stuff. Or rather, I have what I currently have alerts on up at the top, and if I need more room, I can scoot that down, just like that. And vice versa. If I want just my information, now I can come down in here and it provides an information screen that's just infinitely scrolling. So very, very cool. And you know, like I showed you before, you can then dive right into those and do all kinds of fun stuff. Now, is there much more that you can do? Well, not really. Let's take a look. We have three buttons down at the bottom that we can get into by hitting the menu key. We've got help, we've got phone settings, and home settings. Phone settings is what you'd expect. It's the standard Android phone settings. Home settings, on the other hand, is just preferences, orientations, whether you, or not you want the status bar, because you don't really need it, because you've got it all in that center bar. Uh, and then, of course, how you can set up your weather, your Facebook, stocks, calendar, Google Reader, Gmail, Twitter, all that stuff. So, kind of neat there. Now, you, you might be thinking, that's great, Joe, but how do I launch any apps from this thing? Well, that's a very good question, and I will show you that coming right up. All right, so I've been using this as my launcher for the last couple weeks, and this morning I actually switched it back to Launcher Pro, and I forgot to set it back to uh, slide screen. So I went ahead and did that, and now you'll notice when I hit menu, the behavior's a little bit different. Instead of pulling up that menu, which you can still get to by hitting menu again, but instead of doing that, uh, what it does is it pulls up your launcher, and it's divided into two parts. You see that up on the top, it's kind of gray. It brings up your notification bar, status bar at the very top, which is optional on the home screen, and then it's got your apps down in the bottom. Now, the way this is, is divided is really nice. Up in the top, I've got my most frequently or my most commonly used apps, the ones that I want to have ready access to, and I have manually placed them up there. And in the bottom is my whole drawer worth of apps, all bazillion of them. But on the top, I can scroll to the side, 
either way and just wrap around. It shows me a little indicator here that says, you know, this is what panel you're on. If I want to add a new icon up here to, uh, to my quick launcher, what I need to do, let's say I want to do uh, bump. So tap and hold on that and you'll notice everything else has grayed out and up on the top now these little guys are wiggling around. So I'm going to go ahead and put this right here next to Shop Savvy and there you go. I've dropped it on there. It's right there. It's easy to access. The launcher here, the app launcher, the app tray is just very, very well thought out. It's simple. It's elegant. And I'm still back with my information, which really is the most important part of the phone in my opinion. It's right there. It's right on screen. It's at a glance. This is the natural evolution of Microsoft's today screen from the Windows Mobile days. So, really impressed with it. I'd still like to see a real live stream launcher app that I could get into and use that, that functions like a true, a true stream of data rather than something like this. But I'm sure that's, uh, that's something one of you guys, hopefully if you're watching it and a develop, developer can, uh, can build for me. In any event, this is the pro version of the app. It is not free. I'm not going to tell you prices on this. It's not all that much because prices have been fluctuating quite a bit. There is a free version of the app that has a, an ad down here at the bottom as the last item, which really takes up quite a bit of real estate when you're talking about information on the screen. Uh, but it's so radical, I highly recommend that you go out and grab that and try it and see if you like it. It's going to take you at least a couple days of using it exclusively before you're going to get a taste for it. And it's not something that's going to be easy to get used to because it is such a divergence from, from your traditional launcher screens. So go ahead and give it a try. I want to know, and just a side note up here, I'll mention, I just got a new email and up at the top I've got an email with a little email indicator right there. Came through while we were talking and of course I've got my phone sounds muted so you didn't hear anything. Just a nice subtle little reminder, hey you've got email and the indicator is also color coded to the, uh, the type of information, yellow for email, green for calendar. So very cool. Anyway, back to what I was saying. I'd like you to go out to the market. I'd like you to try it. Search for slide screen, all one word. Download the demo, install it, try it. Tell me what you think, especially what you think of the setup process. It's rather impressive. It takes care of setting everything up for you in one very easy process that you can get back to again if you uh, decide to skip it by going into help configure the weather and basically go through this whole wizard. But let me know in the comments what you think of the app, what improvements you'd like to see in a future version, and if you would use something like this or this in particular as your launcher app on a semi-permanent basis. Go ahead and leave those in the comments. If you like seeing different ways to customize your Android, please give this video a thumbs up and you have if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our video channel. It doesn't cost you anything and it'll help you keep up to date on everything that has to do with mobile and handheld tech and let you impress your friends, which we all know is really what life is all about. So, for Pocket Now and showing off Slide Screen Pro, I'm Joe.